You're listening to the Effective Statistician Podcast, a weekly podcast with Alexander Schacht and Benjamin Pieske, designed to help you reach your potential, lead great science and serve patients without becoming overwhelmed by work. Today we are speaking about how to leverage time boxing to reduce overwhelm being a statistician. <music> I don't know how you feel about work, but I'm very often distracted. I need to fight that distractions all the time. And the other thing that really bugs me is whenever I feel I've procrastinated too much and things like that. So today we are talking about two techniques that are really, really good and that help me personally a lot in overcoming distractions and fighting procrastination time boxing and batch processing. So we'll speak about my experience, we'll speak about Benjamin's experience and I'm pretty sure you can get a lot help from that because we are all overwhelmed. I think overwhelm is so, so, so common. Whenever you talk to other people, they say they are busy, they have too much to do, um, they have competing priorities, they don't know how to keep up with the work, and that really drives a lot of, lot of dissatisfaction. And you go home in the evening, and you don't know what you've actually done during the work, during the day. And that is a really, really bad feeling in the evening. So these two things will really help you to overcome that and will help you to have meaningful discussions with your supervisor about priorities and things like that. So have fun listening to this episode. This podcast is, like usual, created in association with PSI, a global member organization dedicated to leading and promoting best practice and industry initiatives. Join PSI today to further develop your statistical capabilities with access to the video on demand content library, free registration to all PSI webinars, and much, much more. Just visit the PSI website at psiweb.org to learn more about PSI activities and become a PSI member today. Welcome to another episode with Benjamin Pieske and myself. Hi, Benjamin. How are you doing? Hi, Alexander. Well, very well. How are you? Very good. Are you feeling overwhelmed today? <laughs> uh, slightly. Just a tiny bit of uh, quite a bit to do. And, you know, you don't know where your head is and things, you know, thoughts are just crossing through and everything. So it's been quite a weird day today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I used to be quite overwhelmed um, when a couple of years into my um, into my career, I had my to do list, and uh, that was more or less my only productivity tool. And of course, I was um, very diligent in putting everything on there. And um, also, I at one time read uh, "Getting Things Done." Do you know that book? By no. And um, it's all about lists. And then I had these these amazing lists and all these different projects and um, everything got organized. And the only problem was the to-do list went longer and longer and longer and longer. And I, I, I felt completely out of control. It was... It was really frustrating because when in the morning you start with your work and in the evening you have more things on your to-do list than in the morning, that's so frustrating. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds like everyday's life, but it's um, – <clears throat> no, I, I know what you mean. I, it, for me, it's like I, I, you know, I prefer having a book or like, some, like a notebook where you can just take the um, to-do list. And also for me, it's, you know, you add things on the list and you're happy at the end of the day to cross off things. But at the end, you have then the second page and third page. And actually, then you have to move to another page with everything renewed because, and you know, and then changing priorities. And this is really not adapting to this. So I actually went to, you know, use this in, in the in Outlook really the task list and uh but then i realized this is not not so handy as as a, on, the, on the notebook so it's not really 
So I'm still with the notebook and the priorities uh, or the to-do list, but I, I know what you mean. It's, it has a tendency yeah. of getting longer. Yeah, I also worked with Outlook for quite some time. And um, so what I did was I just marked all the to-dos, uh, most of them coming from emails, and then just marked these emails as to-dos. And that is really weird because then you see the email and you're not sure what you exactly need to do with it because you just have the email title and that might be just, you know, study XYZ SAP update, whatsoever. And you don't know, is that a small task? Five minutes? Ten minutes? Two hours? It's three days? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, uh, and, and also kind of having priorities there is really, really difficult. And then it takes more and more time and it gets longer and longer. And, um, yeah, I actually started to just mark the, the task do time. You know, if it's urgent, then I marked it for today or tomorrow. And if it's not the urgent, I just marked it for next week. So in terms, it's still on the list. So you see it, but it's mm -hmm. not, it's not popping up on, on, you know, on top of the list. So it was kind of yeah. a prioritization of the, uh, yeah, it's, it's not, it's more kind of a priority according to urgency. Yeah. Not, yeah not, basically, follow <laughs> <laughs> you know, whoever is doing the highest pressure on me, I just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so one of the other problems I had was that that I um, felt I was constantly overcommitted. I couldn't really say when I could get things done. When people would ask me, "Okay, how long does it take?" Well, I can tell you how long the task itself takes, but I have no time when I will actually be able to start with this given all the other things I need to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's a really, really frustrating situation. At one point, I stepped over something that is called time boxing. Have you heard about that before? Um, no, actually not. I mean, I, I kind of now a little bit read about it, but it's just that I did not hear the, the phrase of time boxing. So I did use so some of the points, you know, we can't get to this later where some of the points were quite um, uh, known and for me at least a bit obvious for some of the things. But in general, time boxing sounds much better than I, you know, I didn't ever, ever made a big word about this, but it sounds great for this. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. I think you just... Uh... <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll now get to, uh, get to it. And... and um The other thing that I really love is that um, the combination of time boxing and batch processing. So uh, batch processing here, not so much in terms of the uh, computer batch processing that you send a task and gets done at a certain time point and, and things like that. It's more um, for your own uh, tasks that mm. you need to do. And uh, the combination of both is actually quite, quite uh, interesting. And, um, well, if you're listening to this uh, podcast for quite some time, you'll probably notice that I'm a big fan of Michael Hyatt. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> What a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's a couple of things uh, coming from him. And I'm not sure he actually talks about both things, time boxing and batch processing, basically in the same uh, content parts that he's providing, but he speaks about both. And um, it's, it's a combination of both that really helps a lot with productivity. So one of the quotes, one of my favorite quotes from Michael Hyatt is actually, what gets scheduled gets done. Um, and What's not scheduled isn't good. <laughs> He's definitely right with the second piece, but it's uh, for the first one. It there's a, there's a slight you know like a dependency on this discipline that you need to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it's it's for sure if you have it in your calendar, it has a much higher likelihood to get done. You know, if you for example have a meeting in your calendar in which you want to come to a decision or in which you review something together or whatsoever that's in your calendar everybody comes to it and it gets it, it happens yeah you get to the result at least if you run the meeting productively so, so, but that's another point but 
Well, I, it's I, in your calendar, so it gets done. Yeah, that's true. But it's it's there's also like if you have a meeting, at the, what I think is the difference is that you, um, you know, you work with other people, so you kind of have a um, dependency on each other and a reliability on each other. So so therefore, if somebody else is involved, you are more, you know, you're punctual. You get there. You 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 know, you see the meeting as being responsible or for for the things to get done. Together with, yeah. yes, with your colleague or client or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, that's the accountability part in it. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so, so, um, and if others, um, hold you, hold you accountable, then that's a very, very good thing. In terms of time boxing, I found a really interesting, um, article by Mark Zau Sanders. And he's, um, seems to be one of these productivity guides that does a lot of research on it. And he did a study in which he looked into uh, 100 productivity tips. And time boxing was ranked number one in that one. Well, what kind of study was this? It sounds interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, so in short, it's not, let's say, a super sophisticated study, but, but they looked into lots of different... Um, things that you can do to increase your productivity and um, measured each of these things on a couple of different uh, dimensions. And time boxing was coming on top if you sum it all up. So quite nice to, to see. Okay. Uh, so obviously under all the productivity geeks out there, something that is um, really makes a difference. And I can tell you, since I have adopted it, it really helped a lot to make things easier for me. And um, yeah, but maybe before we get there, and maybe just explain a little bit more what exactly the time boxing is. I mean, probably is, yeah. you know you guys have an idea of what you know what, what we are aiming for, but just to be more precise. So, so, so basically, you use your calendar as a funnel. Yeah, you have decided on how many hours in the day you're working. Yeah, whether you're working full time, uh, eight, nine, ten hours a day, or you're working half time for five hours a day, or you know any any other things which days you're working on, and that's all the time you have. And so, so everything that you want to do, you schedule it into your calendar. So basically, your calendar has all your tasks in it. So let's say not only the meetings, but also every all the other things. So let's say you need to review your SAP. And um, for that type of SAP, you know it takes you probably about two hours to review it. So um, you put a meeting with yourself in the calendar of two hours, to basically review the, uh, the SAP. Or if you can't find a slot for, with two hours, you schedule maybe part one, one hour, part two, another hour. Yeah. So that way you can say, okay, during this time, I will do this priority task and so I know exactly when it's going to happen. Of course, like similar to meetings, you know, things can go a little bit astray, but, um, in principle, you have reserved a specific time slot in your calendar where you're going to do that. And now if someone else comes and wants to schedule a meeting during that time, you can say, sorry, I already have another commitment. That's true. But maybe it's something changing about the, you know, the priorities and, and follow up, especially when it gets to follow up from other meetings. So what I see, I mean, I do, I do exactly <clears throat> the same partially. So if I have especially bigger chunks of work where I really need to spend some, like an hour or so, I just block this my calendar saying I need to do this or, you know, just, to <clears throat> so that's, that's fine. But what, what I see is that often, you know, if you have preceding meetings, or preceding tasks. There are follow-up tasks that are just, you know, need to be scheduled um, or make make life easier. So if you have a, as an example, if you need to write minutes from a from a meeting, yeah, then don't do it afterwards, but do it like uh, right away. So, yeah, that is, that's that's a very very good example. So you basically have the meeting, and after the meeting, you directly schedule an appointment with yourself where you write the minutes. 
Yeah, if you know it in advance. That you need to write. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, depends on the no, meeting organization. Yeah. If you if you have a good meeting organization, you know who no. writes the minutes. It's true. <laughs> it was just an example. I mean, just that, that, that there are follow-up tasks that need to be done at some point. So somebody waiting or you realize during the meeting that there's some other things to do, which are quite urgent. But anyway, yeah, I mean, you can also move around um, the calendar entries in your calendar. So that's why it's not Like you move around meetings, yeah. you move around the other things. But uh, that gives you a very clear prioritization directly. Yeah, so, so you know exactly, okay, when I commit to this one, I can say, okay, which are all the other things that need to move out? So that, you know, gets you a very, very clear prioritization and mm. a very good way to trade off things against each other. So especially if you're working with maybe just two or three study teams, that becomes a major advantage because then you can say, okay, yeah, I can first look into this paper, but then I can't work on the SAP for the next database log. Is that okay? What is a bigger priority? Yeah. So, so, and then you can have a good discussion with others. If you just have a to-do list, you put everything on your to-do list and people say, well, you committed to both. Oh, yeah, but I couldn't do both, but it was not visible to anybody. It wasn't even visible to you that you had a clash there. That's one of the really, really nice things. The other thing is what I talked earlier about is the combination with batch processing. You may have on a regular basis uh, a series of smaller tasks, like let's say emails or maybe reviewing expenses or what could be a couple of other things. Maybe you need to um, set up all your meetings of the week or um, collect all the tasks from from the previous week and, and make sure everything is organized. So these kind of little tasks you can bundle together and schedule. So for example, I have a regular slots in my calendar where I do all my emails. So you're checking your emails during this time and then you just try to enter yeah. them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so that way I'm, I know, okay, there's a dedicated time slot in my calendar where I just do emails and then I'm in the flow of it. Mm. And so just hammering emails out on, <laughs> you know, one after the other, instead of kind of getting distracted all the time. Of course, well, if I have, you know, a meeting ends early, five minutes early, maybe I do another two, three emails, but, but it's just then a conscious decision to um, use some time in between there. But the large chunks of email really get done through these dedicated uh, periods. Yeah, I mean th that's that's a good idea anyway, and and you know without uh, you know what or, uh, what we discussed in earlier episodes as well is to you know for for emailing take the time and then just switch it off or leave it off because this is really distracting for the other tasks that are on the list and on whatever list. So <laughs> so this is this is true um, that the <clears throat> this this can be part of the uh, of the uh, calendar to block your time. And, and also relieve you for the rest of the day or the rest of the hour or whatever um, chunks you use for, for writing emails uh, and don't put any pressure or distraction on you for this um, yeah. additional time. Yeah. And, and also it helps that you don't need to put kind of super small tasks in your calendar. Yeah, so, so you don't want to have oh, yep. three minutes of answering this email and five minutes for answering this email and no, six like this. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't make any yeah. sense because I mean, then you probably need more time to write it down than to actually exactly. the emails. So, so no, yeah. it needs to be like a, like a good chunk of work that you put in, you put in there. Yeah. And, um, I don't know what, what is the, what is your common, uh, let's say, um, size of the chunks. So is it like the, the duration of the time? So most of the chunks for me are probably half an hour, mm. half an hour-ish or multiples of that. But I have seen other sets use 15 minute chunks as well. So, um, I think that's a little bit of a personal preference, but, um, 
especially the more busier you get and maybe also the more kind of control you want to have over things the smaller chunks you can get but, but i think below 15 minutes doesn't make a lot of sense yeah i think 15 minutes is quite challenging as well because if i just imagine i take a, you know <clears throat> I, you know 15 minutes takes me to take a bring a coffee in or something then <laughs> <laughs> you could schedule even these kind of things i think it's 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 really nice because you can even schedule your breaks yeah yeah so, so I, for example, schedule also my lunchtime because otherwise it gets overscheduled, especially if you work within different time zones. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, the Germans say, okay, we assume you have lunch between 12 and one o'clock. And then the, for the UK partners, that is between 11 and 12. So they schedule a meeting there. And then you have a German meeting starting at one o'clock and mm -hmm. voila. No lunchtime anymore. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah. No, I think it's it's it sounds like a um, a very good way of improving um, productivity and to also focus on on the tasks that need to be done. Because if you if you're really dedicated to what your schedule says, then you know it it helps because it's dedicated time for for a specific task. What I think, I mean, um, you might be different or and more more structured then but i think it you know it's not necessarily the way that you know you should maybe plan your eight ten or whatever hours a day really from, from very beginning to the very end but what i do and what i would recommend is at least to you know get some of the time really to dedicated time yeah. um to i mean because and it's it's also different to in, in, in what environment you work so how how the um company culture is in terms of communication so if you the primary communication is the telephone then i mean you know they they don't see your schedule so they can't schedule mm -hmm. it in so they call you so it might be that this is not a that this is not not the um, you know if it's more about emails you can just put them in if it's about communicator uh, you know you could just block it um, so during this time so this is kind of something where you need to um, uh, kind of find the best way of uh, implementing this in your day to day life um, there's no one hundred percent no zero percent there's always something in between yeah. yeah actually that's another good point you can even plan in some buffer time. Yep. So um, I, th I think that is a very, very good recommendation to plan in some buffer time because as we know, things happen, you know, and you don't know what will happen, but you can assume something will happen. And if you haven't planned in any buffer time, that leads to stress. Yeah, then, then you need to kind of, uh, you don't know, need to pick up your kids later or uh, your wife gets angry or whatsoever. Yeah. So, some, yeah. Something happens. And um, just because you haven't anticipated that, you know, there's a, of course a probability that things get. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, it's, it's especially usually an ending in the overtime. So if you, um, you yeah. know, you end up doing the buffer time in the overtime, if you don't plan it in, um, so yeah. the end of the day or even, you know, at the beginning of the night. So that's, um, that's something really that needs to be planned in definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we are already quite into the benefits uh, of um, yeah. why I think time boxing is a really, really nice tool. And um, I wouldn't step back from it. So I've changed a lot of kind of my different productivity things. But but uh, since I started that a couple of years ago, that is really one thing that I absolutely stick to it. You know, we said already that it helps you to allocate the right time. It saves space for important work yeah so i think that's a really really uh important thing as you earlier mentioned there's a tendency to just work on the urgent things and not also work on the important but not urgent things mm. and just kind of let them drag on and on and on uh, up to the point where they're important and urgent and if you're working only in this um 
important and urgent sell of the Eisenhower matrix, then, um, yeah, that's just a really, really bad place to be. <laughs> it sounds like stress. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and also, I mean, sometimes the important things do help you to do the urgent things. So, I mean, just as an example, the training. So if you do a training and just move it out because you have urgent things to do and then you realize, Oh, you know, what I have done the training earlier. Then so yeah. this is something where, you know, we, you know, urgent things are basically important things. So you should not try to prioritize just because of, um, no, uh, yeah. uh, important things are urgent things. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> the sharpening the saw story by, by Stephen Covey about, about, you know, you need to make sure that you're working effectively and, and you need to hone in on your skills and, and your, uh, systems to Im improve your productivity because that time investment pays out a lot. So, um, we al also already said that it helps you to avoid overcommitting mm -hmm. and, um, it's a really, really nice tool to say no. It's, uh, you know, I don't know. This, um, saying no is so liberating. <laughs> It is. I mean, it's the, it doesn't. It doesn't release you from saying no. It just shows you clearly that you should be. You should say no. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but but uh, you know, it's we just need to say more or no because um, unless you have just went to a, into a new job or maybe you're very early in your career, I don't know anybody that is kind of. Um, finishes his day and, you know, is to-do list empty. That, that just doesn't happen. And um, it's it's important, therefore, to say no to all the non-important things, all the things that don't help you to achieve your goals. And you can put the really important things in your calendar and with that you know, basically makes the funnel more and more tighter. And that way you can say no to all the non-important things. That really helps you to be intentional with your time. And if there's one thing that you really need to focus on is being intentional with your time. Mm. Because everything flexes except time. <laughs> you know, you can maybe negotiate more money or you can be more energetic. You can be all kind of different things, but time Past. is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every day is 24 hours and As maybe, in, maybe, yeah, that's it. <laughs> as a matter of fact, it just passes by. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this, this force to prioritize things is really, really nice. It's it's actually a little bit similar to the force that um, of prioritization that you have in these uh, Kanban systems. Have you heard about Kanban? No. I okay. Yeah, it's it's a it's also a kind of um, system that was invented by Toyota to um, manage how many tasks or yeah things are in a process and you basically build in there some some of these funnels as well some constraints to make sure there's no not too many actions in certain levels and so that the system doesn't break and uh, there's a, a way you can transfer that to your personal system and create a personal Kanban system. So uh, there's also tools like Trello or other tools that help you to do that. And um, the idea there is that you have only a certain amount of tasks that are basically active at any time. Hmm. And so, so you say, okay, I'll not add another task until one of these other tasks is complete. So let's say you say for yourself, okay, there can be only five tasks that are active at any given time. And so when you get a first another task, either one of these tasks needs to get on hold or 
it first needs to get completed. Mm. And uh, so, so it's it's if you look into and look for Kanban, you'll see this um, uh, funnels that uh, with with constraints to help you uh, prioritize your work. And here's the idea is the same. You have the calendar, and that sets a constraint on your time. And through that, you know at any given time. You're only doing one thing and it's clearly prioritized. What is the next thing? And then the next thing and then the next thing. So, so everything gets in a sequential order. And, um, so, so to say, Kanban to the max. Yeah. So, so, um, very, very organized. And of course you can have, you know, in addition to it, kind of a longer to do list that, um, you work on. Later on, you know, it's just a, something like a pool of ideas to, to work on rather than actually a to-do list. When do you manage all this putting in a calendar? Is it like an like extra slot in the calendar or is it just ongoing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so meta. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's actually, uh, um, an extra slot in my calendar. So, so I have each, um, Monday morning. I look into all my tasks, I look into my calendar, and then I schedule out things. And um, not just for this week, but usually for the week beyond as well. Because I don't want to find myself in Monday morning and then, you know, being rushing to, to lots of things. So, so usually I have these planning cycles a little bit overlapping. Well, very disciplined. <laughs> I mean, you need to be because if yeah, otherwise it's it's just um, you know, as you would say in ge German, Kraut und Rüben, so the chaotic. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, there's another interesting uh, aspect to that. Um, have you heard about Parkinson's law? Just slightly touched it when reading the boxing um, uh, the, the, the the article. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I once had a colleague that was very good at it. So she um, she also had far too many things on her list. So she said, well, I'll just reduce the time that I take to do these things. So, um, for example, she needed to work on a lot of different publications and review lots of lots of different abstracts and posters and things like that. And um, when she would get these chunks of, um, let's say, 10 abstracts to review, she said, okay, each abstract gets 10 minutes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> It's tough. <laughs> and um, it forced her, of course, to to prioritize the really important things in the abstract and not to kind of fine tune everything. And, you know, she left all the typos to the medical writers and really honed in on only the most important pieces. And um, it's the Parkinson's law basically says that um, work expands to the amount of time you give it. So, If you give yourself a day to review this abstract, it takes a day. Yeah, so, so you fine tune it and fine tune it and rewrite it and whatever, and and you can you know optimize it to endlessly. Yeah, um, but on the other hand, you can also probably reach quite a lot of the gains in a shorter period of time. And, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, no, I, that's true. I think it's there. I mean, there are obviously some limitations because it's sometimes, you know, you can't spend endless time on one thing and on the other, you know, you can't do an abstract in a second. So, so there are limitations in terms of, um, yeah. in terms of the, um, the time, um, frame that you can set yourself. But I think this is, this is kind of what we already also discussed before is kind of that you get the majority of things done in the, you know, in a, in a minimum of time. While yeah. if you get 100% done, you need spend, you need to spend lots of more time to really focus on each of the details. So if you concentrate on the 
majority or m maybe sometimes it is only on what is your task and as you yeah. said to the spelling you know let, let the spelling to the medical writer then this is like about delegation so this is really focusing on your task and not on on anything you could potentially do with the abstract so but still yeah i mean this is this is extremely important to uh, to get the right thing out of the of the time and um, especially if you have more tasks to do um, you automatically go into 10 minute cycles <laughs> rather than um, you know one hour per abstract Yeah, and that is also something that um, higher up and more senior managers very often uh, use as a tool. They give you just 15 minutes time slot in a meeting uh, or 10 minutes or five minutes, yeah? yeah? And then you need to get your things explained in that way. And then you can't come with 30 slides. You need to have one slide, three bullet points, and really, really clear on your message. And um, that way they can make a lot of decisions in a short amount of time. Yeah, and they might not understand why they made this decision because they don't have the data, but this is really just doesn't fit into one slide. <laughs> so <clears throat> there are some constraints on this as well. But yeah, that's, that's basically the key. It's just, uh, you know, no time. Yeah. And you need to make the decision based on whatever you receive in three bullet points. Yeah, yeah, and and it's they're the same, you know, um, eighty twenty percent rule. And would an additional twenty minutes discussions really turn the needle? Maybe not if you're alone, but if you're in discussion with others, with count with counterparts, yeah. for example, then it yeah. would add some values. Yeah, yeah, but of course that's okay. kind of. Yeah, you need to have there's this trade-off between yes, exactly. quantity and quality, so yeah. to say. And then, um, yeah, and of course, if you say, okay, I want more quality, you have less quantity. Yep, that's yep. it. Oh, but, but again, it's <laughs> it's also not only about the quality; it's only also about the delegation of the part because you know yeah. Yeah. people tend to take on things which actually shouldn't be on their desks. So. Yeah. Yeah, and we have actually a very, very nice uh, episode about that. Oh, that's quite some time ago that we yeah, recorded one of, that. One of the earlier ones, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think that is one of the single digit ones. <laughs> so, so you need to scroll <laughs> back in your podcast app quite some time to get yeah. to the delegation uh, episode. Yeah, But it's, uh, it's a very, very relevant one. And even if you're not a supervisor, it's a very relevant one. Okay, um, one thing um, that we should speak a little bit more on is the batching of similar tasks into uh, one of these time boxes. Um, it's one of the things that I really, really love because it um, makes me so much more productive. So let's say um, you're reviewing a couple of abstracts and they are all sitting in the same folder all in the same system or things like that. Um, it's really, really easy because you're already in the system and you just click one abstract after the other. And um, so you can focus on the abstracts instead of kind of logging into the system also in and out all the time. Um, similar if you, for example, um, check programs. Yeah, and they say you need to start your software and you need to log into the system. And all that takes a little bit of time. And um, if you do it only once, that's great. The other thing is it's not only about <clears throat> these logging into systems. It's actually also about your your mental state. Yeah, So, so if you're in a reviewing state then you have uh, and you stay in that for quite some time it's much more productive than to switch between lots of lots of different tasks so that's why writers usually also stay on writing as long as possible and then do the editing as as a second uh, part 
So you not switch between writing, editing, writing, editing, writing, editing all the time, because that's really bad for your productivity and you don't get into the flow. Whereas just writing and not correcting any typos is actually much more productive. Yeah, so you, you just mentioned what I already thought of is just to keep the flow. Yeah, you need so, to get some momentum. Yeah. And um, also, if you switch to lots of different things, um, there's even some research, some neuroscience research that says always a little bit of a, so to say, residuum left in your mind of the previous task. So, um, and that hinders you on performing the next task very well. Mm. So, that builds up over time. Yeah, and I think it's also like what, what sometimes, you know, if, if you do like reviewing CVs, you know, from, from recruitment, then it's also quite good to do this at once because then you have a comparison. You are, you know, you know, you think of, you know, reading the first CV, you might not think about something you see when you read the second CV and then go back in the first one and just double check. Mm -hmm. So just putting one topic or several topics of uh, into one, Uh, phase of, of, of your work, um, box, then this is definitely an advantage in many ways, as you said. Yeah. Or if you, um, set up a lot of different programs and, you know, you first start with, okay, I first set up all the different headers in the different programs and makes yep. them look straight. And, um, then I do, you know, all the lip names in it and, and whatsoever. Well, I, I haven't programmed for quite some time, so I don't go into details here. That's, <laughs> but um, that's a little bit, at least the time when I was programming, that was the way to do it. Okay, the other really nice thing is it helps you to build good productivity habits. Um, we have, in the in a couple of different episodes across the podcast, uh, talked about productivity habits and having these regular schedules, uh, meetings with yourself scheduled in your calendar helps you to um, do these habits over and over and over again and all these tasks over and over again in the same way. And that builds habits and that then decreases um, effort. Um, so for example, starting your day always in the same way, ending your work day always in the same way, ending your work week or starting your work week. Like we talked about, you know, setting up all these, uh, uh, to do's in your uh, calendar. That's a really, really nice way. Manage. Yeah. And, and activity. Yeah. And what I also think is just, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, um, setting goals and setting, you know, goals for yourself, for your supervisor or with your supervisor. And at the end of the day, at the end of the year, actually, you might, you know, just be in trouble and saying, what, what did you actually do? And then if you look in your calendar, you actually have an excellent reference of what task you did do. I mean, you may delete the email boxes, but <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, I mean, if it's really about, uh, you know, for example, the, the abstracts to review or the SAPs to review. So where have you been involved? What is this? So this is like a perfect track of, um, of a record of your, of your work and your workload and your, um, you know, achievements that you had over, over the, in the last year. So that's a really good thing as well. For me, it's even for the last week it's important <laughs> because I don't sometimes know on the Monday what I did the Monday before. And when I look back into my calendar, I say, ah, yeah, that was a nice achievement that I, you know, mm -hmm. got that paper out or that I um, worked on these kind of visualizations or whatever. It helps me for my personal tracking. And as you said, it's a huge thing for, for performance reviews and things like that, because you basically di directly see everything in your calendar. Uh, maybe not everything, but lots of, lots of different lots things. Of things. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, if you need to track your time, um, it's a perfect tool. Yeah. So, so you have very clearly delineated. I worked there on this compound. I worked there for that client. I worked there on this 
productivity system or whatever or SOP update and um, training. So what's yeah, so yeah. all documented. Hmm. Yeah. So so you can very easily say okay. That's all what I have done. And you can also very easily track uh, even overtime. Yeah. So um, actually, it's a quite nice way to reduce overtime as well. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, that's that's the goal. But maybe yeah. you should avoid putting in the coffee breaks because this might not be. <laughs> <laughs> you can call them networking time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But but anyway, you know, most of these meetings that I have myself, I, I turned on private. It, it's a little bit depending on the company culture that you have. Mm. So uh, in some companies, um, everyone's calendar is quite open and you can then have a good and open discussion about it. In other calendar uh, companies, uh, you may just see that there's a meeting but not what that this is about. And um, to be honest, I prefer much more the kind of open system, but that's cultural. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think it's it's kind of, uh, I think we have both, to be honest. I think you can open this up for others or for everyone, but you don't need to. So it's not a... Yeah, yeah there's different, different levels that you can update. Yeah. So, so block your calendar completely so people can't even see when you have free time or you just see kind of, when you have free time or you just even see what people have in their calendars. Yeah. So, so, um, well, but, but in terms of, um, let's say your mental state about that, for me, there's a couple of different, very, very personal benefits, uh, to this, um, to this approach. First, I really feel in terms of having control over my time. I once talked to a colleague that was saying, um, I don't own my calendar. My administrative assistant is doing that. I said, really? Then you don't own what you're doing. It, you know, I think it's okay that your AA manages your calendar, but in principle, you own your time. And um, if you delegate that, well, how can you be intentional about what you want to achieve? <laughs> I think that's that's a kind of a mix, or maybe I, I don't know, you know, I don't know the details. But I think if it if it if the person was using time boxing, then yes, I don't know what the administration you know what to do with that. But if it's just about you know kind of coordinating at what time. Uh, you know, the um, a telephone conference could be set up or something, then there's something different. But using yeah. time boxing and having this done by somebody else, that's strange. Well, well, I think you can for sure organize that with your AA and say, okay, these are the different things and this is the different priorities. Here are the different time slots where I want to have my meetings. Yeah, so, so um, Michael Hyatt, again, <laughs> starts with uh, something that he calls his ideal week. So he says, okay, all my meetings I generally want to have on these days. Of course, there can be exceptions, yeah, but, but generally these are the meeting days. This is uh, for him, for example, writing day. Could be for you, that is my programming time. That is my meeting day. And this is, uh, you know, where I do all the trainings. And that's my kind of email afternoon, whatever. Yeah, so, so everybody can have a different uh, setup there. But it, it, of course, helps if you have it a little bit coordinated across your department or your group. Yeah, so, so Indeed. No, yeah, if you're five people and everybody picks a different day of the day week as a meet, meeting day, it's not really helpful. But, you know, you can also do it the other way around and say, okay, uh, no meeting Friday or whatever. Yeah, so, mm. so these things can help you to, to set up uh, something like that. The smaller the organization is, the, the easier that probably gets. And the more higher up in the organization, you're probably the more easier you can get to this ideal week. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll just uh, add a note in the show notes about that. And then you can find out 
about Michael Hyatt's uh, ideal week. By the way, we'll add lots of lots of different references here, actually, in the show notes. But mostly for Michael Hyatt. No, no, no. There's also <laughs> this uh, this list of 100 productivity tips in there. No. So, um, if you want to find out more about productivity and get a really, really long list, <laughs> that's probably a <laughs> nice thing. Yeah. Um, and the other things is it's really nice to look back in your day and see what you have actually achieved. So, of course, you get that from a ticked-off um, uh, to-do list as well, but um, through this conscious um, scheduling of tasks, I get more important, <clears throat> higher, higher relevant uh, to-dos done, and therefore I get a bigger feeling of achievement usually. And I notice that quite directly when I'm not good and scheduling task and kind of I, you know, something happens on the Monday morning and I don't get to schedule my stuff, then that's usually a bad week. So, um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, no, I, I do. I don't, I don't, as I, you know, as I said initially, uh, that I'm not 100% on this time boxing. Um, so just use this partially, but, uh, I know it's a, it's a very good feeling if you, if you have something accomplished. And, um, but for me, it's still somehow, you know, when you cross off things from the to do list, this ah, kind of, okay. I do of that as day. well. I do that as well. I have a to-do list plus I'm scheduling oh, things. Okay. <laughs> just for the feeling of the end of the day. So you, sometimes you really just go home and say, well, what, I, what did I actually do today? It's, you know, what... what yeah. it, it, I don't know. There's probably also some research about that, but um, just striking off the to-do list from your to-do list is... Um, positive yeah it's a psychological reward for you <laughs> so uh, yeah. keep the to-do list really keep well. the to-do list yeah well well i think you need to have a to-do list irrespective of the time boxing yeah so and last but not least it really helps me to fight procrastination so uh because it helps me to boil things down and then really get things done and I think in one of the recent episodes, we, we talked about this um, tool Focus Mate. You can mm -hmm. even kind of schedule a meeting with someone else that yeah. then uh, he or she holds you accountable for actually doing it. So, um, well, if you do the time boxing 100%, then you don't need that person anymore, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you need know, to you hold yourself accountable for these things <laughs> rather than somebody else, even this. But anyway, give it a try. That yeah. sounds like an impressive uh, way of having somebody unknown, um, you know, being for being accountable for. So that's uh, yeah. I, um, I recommended it to uh, a colleague that actually I know struggles with these kind of things, and she loved it as well. Yeah, it's it's a little bit weird. <laughs> I need to. <laughs> I need to say, but um, yeah, some, sometimes, you know, doing the weird things actually make you move forward. So now we talked about time boxing for nearly an hour. <laughs> so one, one box of our time, we talked about time boxing. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, but, but I think it's time well spent because it's such an important productivity hack. And as, as we cited earlier, it was even with this one uh, article, it was ranked as number one among 100 productivity uh, tips. And so um, it's, it's really, really nice. So get your tasks scheduled in your calendar, um, set them up, make sure that you're working on the high priority tasks, not only on the urgent ones. And, um, yeah, combine also smaller tasks together so that you really boost your productivity. And I need to say, combined with goal setting, this is probably the most important things that you can do. So, so, um, well, also delegating, but. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and others. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 it's it really works like magic. And so um, if you still have a question about it, or if you are not still convinced, or have other arguments about it, um, or if you try it out and it works, please leave a comment on the uh, homepage of the Effective Statistician. That would be really, really nice because we would love to um, get feedback from you about what we are talking here about and if that's helping you. We are doing a couple of things about productivity at the moment and that has a reason because that is one of the most common problems that pops up in the surveys that we are doing. And... Um, the discussions we are, are having with colleagues. So um, that's why we're responding to this need. Kind of, we target us a little bit towards statisticians. And so hopefully you get inspired uh, through that and take action, look into your to-do list and schedule your first tasks. At, at a time box for listening to the podcast, for example. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I usually listen to uh, podcasts while running or, or things like that. So, but uh, but you can time uh, schedule something uh, for for that as well. Yeah. So I know even people that schedule time f with a spouse in it. In it. Not sure what the spouse thinks about that, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay. So talk to you next week. All right. Bye. <laughs>